All right, here we go. This is the intermediate ANOVA logic. That last one, that's sort of like basic ANOVA logic. This is one. Actually, we just had this in our class. It's very cool. Um, another way of thinking about this is it compares the ratio of this sort of hypothetical populations that these samples are likely to have come from. Stick with me. You've got your F ratio, right? Now you know you can measure, let's say, you've got these three groups. One's a one, one's a three, and one's a ten, right? Now you can measure, just like you can measure variance, you can measure variance between these groups and the overall, right? So the average of those, maybe I should do something easy. Maybe, let's say, two, four, six, right? I can measure the variance of those as the difference of each group mean off of the grand mean, right? 2 minus 4, 4 minus 4, 6 minus 4, square them, divide by n. Right, you guys follow me? So calculate the, treat the, each of the samples as though they were sort of like a person, and then calculate the variance, right? However, we also know from that same logic of building up the sampling distribution that we'd have to work backwards, right? If we're dealing with means, we now have to sort of unravel those means and then build a likely population out of them. Does that make sense? And when you do that, maybe you're going to see something like this. So you build this up and you say, OK, we don't really know what this population looks like, but this is a probable estimate of what the population might look like, such that we would randomly draw these three groups by chance, right? So if the groups are, you know, 1, 3, and 10, that would have to be a pretty widely dispersed population if they're samples of, say, 10 people, right? Because to get a sample of 1, 3, and 10, I mean, the standard deviation of that would have to be very large for that to be a probable outcome. Does that make sense? So if that's what we observe, we can say, well, that must have come from this very spread out population, right? Let's call that population between. And then we could say, what would the population likely have looked like from a within sample variance? So if you just look at how individuals are varying from each other, not based on group membership, what would that have looked like? And you could say, oh, the population probably looks something like this. It's likely for them to have come out of this smaller population. This is, by the way, assuming that there's some sort of an effect. And then what you do is you compare the ratio of those two. And if that ratio, if they look like they're more or less the same, oh, the likely distribution from these, this between measure variance and the likely distribution from this within measure variance, they're basically the same. You can say all we're seeing is stuff by chance, right? Again, it's that signal and noise. There is no signal. If those two looked identical, there would be no signal. Here there's a signal. I don't know. Maybe it's, I tried to make it four times, but I wasn't very good with the PowerPoint graphics. So maybe it's like three times. Your F ratio might be three here. But that's another way of thinking about it, of sort of working backwards and saying, what would this likely have come from? And what would this likely have come from? And if those are the same, there's no signal. If those are very different, there is a signal. Does that make sense? You guys got it? Feeling good about the ANOVA? This is, again, it's more important that you get the gist of these. These are sort of high-level explanations, and they take a little digesting. It's not like you generally get them 